In today's video, we are going to discuss the next step after ordering your Langmere Systems MR1 CNC mill. They made it available to pre-order April 26th, and now that our orders are in, we have to wait. Or should we be preparing? Let's get into it. Now the machine is ordered, we've made space in the garage and it's time to prepare the electric and determine what tooling and accessories should be added or deleted from our orders. There's a lot of good information on the website and the form is very helpful. We will use the topics on the form as a template for this video. Let's start with the base assembly. It's clear they put a lot of time and effort into the design and I think it's what sets this machine apart from what's available in the market today. The base requires seven 50 pound bags of concrete and their additional coolant system is set inside the concrete so it's not possible to add it after the concrete is poured. The machine base plates are made up of two pieces of aluminum that are set in the concrete. They will need to be skim cut by the machine once it is assembled. Another topic is the machine's power requirements. I tried recording this but found myself falling asleep so we'll stick with the visual here. A few things worth mentioning is if you're going with the transformer from 120 volts to 140 volts, you're losing horsepower at the spindle, and it's quite substantial. I ran a dedicated 30 amp 240 volt circuit for the spindle and a 20 amp 120 volt circuit for the controls. I have an existing 20 amp 120 volt circuit where I'm installing the machine, and that will be used for the computer and coolant pump. Another topic on the form is what CAD and CAM should be used. This is more of a personal preference. I started out in CAD with Shaper 3D and still have a paid subscription, but I'm mainly using Fusion 360's free subscription for hobbyists and startups due to its features and CAM operations. For me, Shaper 3D is priceless for in-field designs where a computer and mouse are not practical. The next topic I'd like to cover is vice options. This is another subject that really has to do with how you intend to use the machine and your personal preferences. In my order, I went with a pair of Langmuir's custom vise, but I'm planning to email them and change to the SMW vise strictly because of its larger capacity. Let us know what system you prefer in the comments. Other topics on the forum is minimum requirements for cut control. Some members mentioned modifying the Y axes with spacers to increase the Z height of the gantry. Another topic is protecting the ball screws and rails. Langmar says they have linear rails that are fully sealed and the ball screws have wipers and that they've done thousands of hours over years and haven't had any stalls or damage to their ball screws or nuts. But they're developing a molded silicone seal for both sides of the ball nuts that can be added on after the fact. They're expecting them to be around 25 bucks once available. A modification I'm going to add to the machine is adding additional anchor points into the concrete base to utilize more of the maximum workpiece footprint. They supply tapped holes on the machine table. So if you had a workpiece that was larger than 20 by 20, less the distance the outermost anchor points are tapped on the machine table may limit you to say 18 by 18 workpiece. By adding additional anchor points in the concrete outside of the machine table, you could theoretically use more of the 31 by 37 inch workpiece capacity. Also on their control box, they show the power switches on the back. They haven't given us much information on if the machine can be shut down from the computer. If not, I intend to put the spindle and the machine control circuits on switches. On a side note, they have their flooded coolant relay box as an option on their website for $79.95. The same box listed as a switching relay power strip on Open Build's website costs $27.99 plus shipping. I'll leave a link in the description. Let us know what modification and tweaks you are planning in the comments. Assembly documents are forthcoming. They promise they will be very detailed matching the style and detail of the other manuals they have for their plasma tables. I'm looking forward to getting started on this build. Thanks for taking the time with us today at Work and Play USA.